Hey guys, uh, welcome to World Class Augusta. I am Matt Corbin, I'm the Ops Supervisor here. Um, I started with the company about three and a half years ago when they first came to Augusta as a shipping and receiving crew um, and moved shortly thereafter to the Ops Supervisor role. Uh, when I first started, we didn't have any assemblies. We only had stock parts for John Deere Commercial. And since then, we haven't really had, we had a few minor assemblies, but Lift Arms is our first major assembly and project um, that we've onboarded here at this location. And it's just been really cool to see this project develop um, over the last year. And just as we've brought new people in, the cost improvements we've made, and the impact it's had on the company, um, seeing everybody get excited over such a large project and the company. So a, few, a quick overview of a few of the numbers that uh, the lift arm cell has that we are looking at when we onboard this project. Um, we started out with a 22,000 PCAU, over four different part numbers, and over this last year it's increased by 6,000 pieces, so we are currently looking at a 28,000 piece EAU for this cell alone. Um, that's driven by the demand for the one and two series tractor, which are produced here locally, uh, right across the property line actually, as you guys saw earlier from the drone footage. And it's about a 90% take rate from all the customers. They, um, this is a uh, automatic quick connect and quick disconnect for all the mower decks that go with those tractors. So most customers are taking this as an aftermarket or right off the rip as a, as a new uh, piece of their tractor. So. Um, it's really cool. We've done a lot of cost improvements over this, including switching our metal fab and saving $1.2 million um, for them, and then switching all of our cardboard over to uh, PCA Core of America, and that saved about another $65,000 as well. Um, overall, this project is about $10.2 million in sales, so anything that we can do to help John Deere keep that cost savings down is something that we're looking at doing as well. A few things that we've done here uh, at this facility to work on cost improvements is um, we brought in Tulip. We were one of the first facilities of world class to bring in the Tulip uh, PLC system. This helps drive all of the torque wrenches that we use here. And as you can see on the screen, it gives picture work instructions. It holds our times for us and it's helped us create contests, honestly, a little time trials with every assembler um, that everybody can get involved in but it helps hold the quality, it helps hold our time systems down, gives us picture work instructions that goes with each step of the process and really just helps drive this cell to be um, of the quality that we need. We've produced almost 20,000 parts over the last year and have had zero quality rejects due to our labor involved. Um, a few other things that we've done to help with this is we've added pneumatic wrenches rather than only hand wrenches. Um, Des Moines, sent us our conveyor belt system, so thank you to Des Moines, that has been a lifesaver for us. Um, and just this overall development of the whole team pitching in and finding two second improvements constantly, um, Tulip has helped drive that from the start and really allowed us to focus in on every aspect of the assembly and this process that we're developing around, the, around this whole assembly here and the way to do it. Uh, my name is Jim Schroeder and I'm uh, lead assembler here. Um, I've been here eight months. In my eighth month, I started in post cell and worked my way over here and just started doing small boxes and working my way into the assembly. Um, what I like about Tulip is it keeps you on track of, of your build and it goes through a step-by-step process uh, from where you start to where you finish and it doesn't let you skip any steps and we'll see in just a minute of how it, it times you and uh, you know it just keeps track of your build so there's it keeps it accurate and it uh, eliminates any errors in your build. What I've seen the most is uh, really we've tried to make everything uh, everything readily available when it comes to stocking, uh, keep this thing stocked ahead so there's uh, no interruption in flow. Uh, everybody's working together on that, including the people that are just driving by and, and getting us parked with the forklift. 
uh, it takes everybody here uh, to make this work smooth, and that's that's really a big improvement. And I think they've had that all along, but I see it uh, improving more and more on those kind of things. Probably between six and seven thousand. Really the biggest reason it is efficient is because of how people work together. We don't try to overload it on any one person. Uh, you know, if it's, if it's heavy here, we rotate around, so uh, somebody's always building, but the guys are sharing the load when it comes to uh, big boxes, bags, uh, small boxes, whatever it is. And really that's the thing that makes it work, is everybody just working together and seeing what what needs to be done where and just stepping in and doing following that process. Sure will. Um, of course all our parts are here available and we start with uh, getting our mounting plates and our bushings and press the bushings in and you know again everything is ready to go. We put our bushings in the bracket and what we do and then we get our drive shaft and we use an air wrench to tighten everything down and then tool it. What that does, step by step, this is the first step. You've got your bushings, your brackets, your drive shaft, and it'll, it'll tell you uh, what you need to do next. And what needs to be done is torquing these four bolts. So we'll go through that process, torque each one, it lets you know the torque and then it goes on to the next step. On the next step uh, we have our frame put in place and we check it, always check our frames for level and just make sure everything's accurate in line for spacing and what that next step is it's showing us that uh, if we need a washer for the proper spacing we have to break this beam to get that washer and again, it will not let us go on to the next step until we do that. And we place that washer in there and put our bolts in. The next step, it's asking for the two torques on the brackets. We go to that step and we go through the process. And again, I've done this a little bit ahead of time. And we torque those two bolts. And it says we've completed that. And again, it's giving you the time. And keep track of our efficiency on all of our builds. So the next step, we want to make sure that we have all our parts in place. So, uh, so you don't jump ahead and forget anything. It's asking for those parts. So we have those parts back behind us. We put the parts on the outside, on the inside. Um, and it's asking for the, the inside parts. We uh, it says for the next step, you cannot go on to the next step until you push. Uh, your pedal to advance. And again, all these parts we don't want to miss anything. And if you do, it won't let you. It won't let you continue. It's asking for washers. We've, we've advanced it with the outside parts. Now we're going for the washer. We break that beam, and we make sure that washer's in place. And then we impact uh, impact these down, and then it's asking asking you for the next two torques, which would be on the outside bolts of the frame. So, again, I've done these ahead of time, and it'll, it'll ask us for those torques. You do the one, and if you, if you don't do that, or if you, you forget the other one, again, you're gonna have to go back. But it's showing us that we need to do this one too. We have our two torques. Everything is complete on the assembly, and then it's given us the signal to go ahead and uh, zip tie our pieces. We zip tie all of our pieces, our two sides, and our drive shaft. It's in place. It's ready to go, and it's asking for the next, uh, the next assembly. It gives us the total of what we've built or what we have left to build. Again, we can always check our time in the upper right-hand corner. This one is ready to go, so we just remove, remove it out of the jig, place it over on the line. And what we do as an assembler, I, I obviously watch and paying attention to how I'm putting it together, but I do a final inspection 
and make sure that everything is in the right place, the washers are in, and make sure this moves, the drive shaft moves freely. And then as I've checked it, I flip this up, and that tells the boxer that this has been checked by myself, and he'll also come along, and when he is ready to put this in the big box, he will see that's up, he'll know I checked it, but he'll also give a visual inspection and just to make sure everything's in place, nothing's missing, and then he'll flip it down and put it in the big box. Hey, I'm Chris James. I'm quality down here in Augusta. So I've been here with Karina since the very beginning. Um, one of the very first things I took on was onboarding all the hose for deer. And uh, from the quality side, I thought I would be inspecting and doing a lot of hands-on, but Folks like you from the very beginning made that very easy. So <laughs> I check it once and I realize you guys know how to do it. And you're the type of folks that you don't want to send anything wrong to our customers. So it makes my life way easier. Hi, my name is Karina Burkle and I've been working with WCI here in Augusta for three years now. We started at the temporary building and then we moved on to the new building and it's grown. I used to be the only one in wholesale. And now sometimes there's three or even five people over here and there's work cells going up all over the place. There's, I've seen four or five different work cells, drive shaft, hydraulic hoses, lift arms over there with the tulip. That's just amazing. Everything. And we've doubled our staff. Everyone on the floor comes over here to learn the computer with me because I love Cam a lot. That stayed with us from the old building right onto the new building and everyone seems to get it when it's a fast paced over here in the wholesale. So every day we are receiving and shipping non-stop. And the way we make that go so flawlessly is everything has a place and every place has a thing. You can see this aisle is one through 13. Everything is labeled, it's nice and neatly stacked on the shelf. So the shipping team can come grab it when they need it. The receiving team brings it in and goes exactly where it always goes on the shelf. Hey, my name is Colton Schroeder. I'm the ops resource here at WCI Augusta. Been here for the last three years. Started out at the old building, uh, transitioned over here to the new building. Um, like I said, been here three years. We've had a lot of new projects, new builds come up in that time frame. Um, some stuff more recently has been the Hiawatha parts transfer. Um, a lot of new business has come our way. It's been a whirlwind, but we're getting it figured out now. It's going a lot smoother here. Um, we're just working as a team together and really getting it done. And uh, some other uh, new business we have would be the Hitachi 100 ton press. I got some more info from Mike here. Yeah, so as you guys all know, um, you guys have seen it through the past Connection Fridays, but we did get awarded the Hitachi business. Um, they're based in Kernersville, North Carolina. We are in the final design stages of the press. Uh, Orders are going to start coming to fruition here in August. Uh, we are very, very excited here from the facility standpoint to welcome that new customer. Um, a very unique build. This is kind of the first of its kind uh, here at World Class. So we love to be the facility that is going to be the first one to do it. Um, I really just want to thank you guys and I really hope you like the video. I know you guys haven't been able to, a lot of you haven't been able to see what Augusta does. Uh, so hopefully this gave you a good overview. So. Thank you and have a good Friday.